Hello friends, this video on friction part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction What is friction? Factors affecting friction Friction is a necessary evil Increasing and reducing friction and fluid friction. So the first question that will come to your mind is what is friction because this entire lesson is all about friction. Now in our previous lesson while we were talking about different types of forces I mentioned about contact and non-contact force and that is where I discussed about frictional force or the force of friction as an example of contact force. So what is friction? In simple words, it is a force that opposes motion. So it is always it always tries to stop motion. It always goes in opposite direction to motion. And what is movement? I mean, what is motion? Motion is nothing but movement. So whenever an object is moving or is trying to move, there is always a force who wants that the object should not move. So that force is friction. So friction you can say is an uh, say uh, an enemy of motion. You take any example where a motion is involved. For example, you take a toy car or a real car as such. So whenever you try to move the car, so if it is a real car, so you will start the car and you'll make it move. Now, if you consider it as a toy car, so you apply some force so that the car is able to move. But at every time there is another force which is acting on this car and which wants that the car should stop. And that is why uh, if you observe it closely, you will see that let us suppose you applied some force on this toy car. So the car moved, it moved only up to a certain distance for a certain period of time and then it stopped. Now this time who stopped the car? The car stopped on its own. So it stopped because there was a force which was acting in a direction opposite to the direction of motion. So if you look at this, the car was moving in this direction. Now, we all know that until and unless a force is applied, the state of motion of an object will not change. So until and unless there is a force which is being applied, an object which is at rest will always remain at rest and an object which is moving will keep on moving forever. But that is not happening in case of this car. So after traveling a certain distance, the car stops because there is a force which acts on this car in the opposite direction. So this is the direction of motion and this is the direction of friction. So there is a force of friction which is acting in this direction. Therefore, whenever the force of friction is dominant enough, it is big enough, it stops the car, it stops the motion. So for any moving object, there is always a force which is trying to oppose the motion. You think of the swing which you normally see in your children's play area. When you go out to play, you would have often seen these kind of swings. Now let us suppose your sister is on sitting on the swing and you just push her from behind. So let us say this is you and this is your little sister. So when she is sitting on the swing, you give her a little push from behind and what happens? And then she, she swings for some time and after some time again, she, the swinging stops. That's because there is a force which is trying to oppose the motion. There is a force which doesn't want that movement to happen, which doesn't want it to swing. And that is why after some time it finally stops. You think of somebody who is on the boat. So if you are traveling on a boat, so the boat it moves with water. Now do you think that if there is no sailor on the boat, if nobody is rowing the boat, so will the boat move? The boat will not move because there also there is a frictional force which is I mean which is exerted by water and which doesn't allow the boat to move. So it will not let the boat move. So if in order to make the boat move an external force needs to be applied which should be able to overcome the force of friction. So for example let us suppose that the boat wants to move in this direction. So let us say boat wants to move in this direction. So every time, always there is a force which is acting in this direction. Now if we want it to move, that means this force has to be bigger 
So in that case, we have to externally apply some force in this direction to make it move in this direction. So for any moving object, there is always a force which is trying to oppose motion, which is trying to stop the motion. So in order to make an object move, we need to apply a force which should be able to overcome the force of friction. So in this lesson, we are going to talk more and more about friction. We are going to talk about uh, what are the various types of friction, uh, how big or small is the magnitude of this force of friction. So we will talk about a lot of details about friction. Now, by now we all know what is a contact force and what is a non-contact force. So contact force is one where the two objects are in contact with each other. Like whenever we talk about force, it is something like one object is exerting a force on another object. So these two objects, if they are in contact with each other, so that is called a contact force and friction is a type of contact force. So how friction is a contact force? Now this force of friction exists or it arises only due to contact between surfaces. Now, until and unless the two surfaces are in contact, there will be no frictional force. So I'll give you an example. Let us suppose there is a ball lying on the table. Now, I want to make the ball move. So what do I do? I apply some force on the ball. I push the ball and the ball starts moving. As you saw here, the ball started moving like this. Now, when the ball is moving, so where is the force of friction acting? Now, when the ball starts moving, there is a force of friction. So the ball is moving in this direction. So this is the direction of motion of the ball. And where is the force of friction? So the force of friction is acting in this direction. So and where is this frictional force acting? It actually acts between the surface of the ball and the surface. So, so here you have the surface or the floor over which the ball is rolling. So if you see here the ball is in contact with the surface. So because of this contact arises the force of friction. Had the ball been not in contact with the surface there would have been no frictional force due to this contact. Now you might say that what if I throw the ball in the air? So will it still uh, experience the force of friction? Yes, because when you throw it in the air, so the ball now is in contact with the air and air also exerts force of friction. So it will experience friction due to the air. So in order to experience friction, the two surfaces need to be in contact with each other and therefore friction is a contact force. Just try out these examples. Now just take your palms and try to rub your palms together. Try to rub both of your hands together. What do you see? Try to do it for uh, some time, maybe a few seconds or may, if possible a minute or so. You will try, tend to feel that it, your hands become warm. And why do they become warm? Because when you rub them against each other, it is the frictional force is acting because the two surfaces, your two palms are in contact. So the force of friction comes into picture and friction produces heat and due to the production of heat, you could feel the warmth when you rub your hands against each other. Take another example, when we walk. So do you think that friction plays a role when we walk? Yes, of course, because when we walk again, a motion is involved and whenever there is a motion involved, there is a force of friction which is acting to oppose our motion. But still we are able to walk. Why? Because we are able to overcome the force of friction. Now, just imagine a situation. Now, you might be thinking that, okay, force of friction or friction is like an... Um, a villain it is playing the role of a villain because we want to walk we want to move and it is always trying to oppose the movement but in reality friction is not really a villain just think of a situation where you want to walk and there is no friction at all so the friction is zero let us just assume that we are just imagining this that there is no friction at all so in that case what happens that would mean that the surface is too smooth. Now, if the surface becomes too smooth, what happens? We tend to slip. And that is why when by mistake you step on uh, the skin of banana, what happens? You tend to fall down. That's because the banana peel or the skin is very slippery. So the friction is very less. So there is no force which is trying to oppose your motion. 
so absolutely nothing is there to oppose you so it is like a extremely smooth surface so as soon as you step over that surface you tend to fall down so that means friction actually helps us to walk by opposing our motion to some extent it helps us to walk but again if friction becomes too much if it is completely trying to oppose our motion then also it might not let us walk let us walk but what happens in reality is there is friction to some extent and we apply some force from our end and that force is able to overcome friction and we are able to walk comfortably so that is about friction thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.